Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and welcome back to another Saturday Live. And yes, of course, I try to go live every single Saturday to answer all of your questions, to discuss the stuff and just to say hello. And I hope you are able to hear me out properly. And uh, Mr. Deshmukh is here. Hey, Mr. Deshmukh, how's it going on for you? I hope you are safe and sound. Let's wait for a few minutes so that people can show up and hopefully YouTube will send notification. But it's going to be tough for YouTube. YouTube is lowering down a lot of their resources and that includes notification too. So there might be chances that YouTube might not be sending the notification much. So yeah, that might be the case. Okay, some people have started to show up. Looks like I'm the first one tonight. Yes, you are first one. And it looks like there are going to be only a few people here. But that's a different thing. Just like always, Mr. Vargas is here. You have been watching my live for like years now. And I really appreciate this thing that he always kind of show up in almost every live. And sometimes he gives his valuable feedback, his experience about... He actually runs a couple of startups as well, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think, I think. So YouTube is uh, definitely not sending any notification. And then people will come up and say, hey, I missed the live. So let's go ahead and talk about it. I just finished watching your other video about your time is now. Yes, I would like to add upon a few things on that part. I personally think that if somebody is missing out this crucial time for his entire next five or 10 years, he is missing the opportunity of saying that I didn't got the time to learn it. Like you should never say this, that I don't got time to learn it. Because if you are not having a time to learn it right now, I don't think so you'll be having it in the future as well. So stop just, <laughs> just making a fool out of yourself. And stop saying that I don't got time for it. I didn't got time for it. You definitely have time for it. Okay, uh, so looks like uh, people are coming up, uh, showing up. Okay, we got 148 people showing up and it's increasing. And I'm going to be taking up questions as well. And I really agree with your words. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, I believe. And there don't if you don't believe me, there are going to be still few people who are going to come up and say, I don't have time to learn this. Like this is probably the most golden period you are ever going to get in your life as part of learning is concerned. And uh, I'm enjoying this time. I'm reading like twice the book that I have been. I have bought like just today. I bought two more books and I'm pretty sure I'll be able to finish them up in the next week. It's so much of the free time. All of my contract jobs are canceled. Surely they hurt in the money part. All of my freelancing stuff is being canceled. The work that I've already done, that payment is also not coming up uh, because everybody is kind of on vacation, not vacation. It's kind of a very struggling time. But regardless of that, it's a struggling time. But I'm not at all uh, in a sad thing or something. I'm just assuming that this is the time I can learn as much as I can. And uh, if you're going to be after this, this whole nightmare is over, I'll be definitely coming back on YouTube and will ask all of you, what did you learn during this time? And if after that somebody says, I don't have time, I'm going to be laughing at him that how could you, how could you waste such a valuable time that you got during this period? And for some people, learning is such essential that uh, they might get collapse, but they are not going to be learning. So yeah. LCO app is not working. It's working fine. You just need to kind of a log out and log in. A uh, few weeks ago, we did an update and probably you are opening the app after a while. So you just need to log out and log in and the app is working absolutely fine. No worries on that part. And yes, definitely we saw a big spike in the users and user time as well on the LCO app. Uh, a lot of now, the average time that user is spending on our app is 136 minutes. That's a pretty lot. That's a lot of time that people are spending in our mobile app. And talking onto the web part, that's a complete different scenario. Okay, saw your pick promoting. Okay, I don't know where that went. It went up like sh like that. Okay. Is competitive programming needed to get good job? I would say not always, but yeah, pretty much established companies 
usually do depend on competitive programming to filter out the audience, but it's not always compulsory. You can have it if you like it. There are a lot of companies which directly go uh, without that as well. Is there any course for Selenium with Java on your app? Um, not with Java. Uh, actually, we don't have any course on Selenium, but uh, Selenium is not going to be tough to make uh, if we plan it up in the future. But I'm not sure that from which language we should be planning it out, either in Java or Python. Uh, most of the people in the industries actually try to learn it through Java, but Python is actually pretty fun in the Selenium part as well, and the support is pretty awesome too. So I'm not pretty sure. I haven't I haven't done much of the research to find out that whether we should go for Selenium with Java or with Python. It's actually a pretty fun thing to learn. And I think not only just testers, I think everybody should spend some time in learning Selenium because you can do so much of the automation of the task. I use it a lot. I'm guilty of that. Uh, apart from testing the stuff, I do a lot of automation and scripts, even sometimes filling up some of the description part of the courses and stuff. I have scripts for them, and I just update that script with my next text that I want to fill it. I run the script, and they just fill the stuff. So yeah, I do use a lot of Selenium in my daily life. Uh, shouldn't be doing that much, but yeah, I do that. Dark mode on LCO app. Uh, no, we are not working on the dark mode, actually. That's not on the number one priority as of now. Uh, we are working on changing the web interface as well as some bringing some more feature. Uh, dark mode, surely that we can work on it. But as of now, that's not on priority. What is Selenium? OK, <laughs> that's an interesting and bit different question. Uh, Selenium is, what should I say? It's not a library, definitely. Uh, it's a module, kind of a cross-platform open source product that you can use to automate a lot of tasks. And it's being heavily used by testers. Let's just say whenever you design any web application, you want to see that whether all elements are loading properly or not, whether the text is coming up properly or not, whether the mouse on over and those elements are coming rightly or not. You cannot do that all the time by manual stuff. You need to write some script that can test all the things. And that's where Selenium is being used most in the web UI testing. They have APM too. Uh, but yes, it can do a lot more than that. You can hack into it, like not just literally hack, but you can use it in your own customized way. And Selenium is pretty powerful. I would definitely highly recommend, probably I'll create some videos in free time. I have a lot of free time now about Selenium and how things are going on. So yeah, we'll be doing that. OK. OK, let's pick up a couple of more questions. How much time is required to learn Java from zero? Hmm. I would say if you're following up my courses, uh, my one course on the Java, I would say three weeks are enough to get you friendly with the syntax and all the basics of it. And then probably a month or a month and a half on Android or something where you build the stuff. Because if you're learning just the syntax of programming and you are writing uh, patterns and stuff, you won't be getting much of the familiarity with the programming. You'll never get the confidence just by printing the patterns and the for loops. The confidence actually comes up from building the stuff. OK. Uh, Raja says, can we have a one Saturday live without without tech, only general stuff? Uh, I think we can have a general stuff kind of a syntax uh, of live in my Instagram. Surely we can do that. And we did just one very, very fun live on Instagram today only uh, in the afternoon. On Instagram, I don't really do a very strict live just like I do here at 9 o'clock. It's fun. It can happen any time of the day. I take users uh, and do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, kind of a chit chat with them. It's so fun and it's so amazing. I love that actually. So in case you haven't followed me up on Instagram, go ahead, do that. And probably we can do a live with you as well, whenever you say so. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. OK, are you in your office or home? I am at my studio. This is my studio. This entire room is. Uh, the recording room where I record most of like all of my videos. There's another room in the studio. 
uh, which is moreover like YouTube videos where I have my standing desk and another iMac. And just sideways this one, I have my bedroom here. So this is a big space and I've converted that most of it into studios. Uh, I think you cannot see that the wall is just behind you guys. This is a soundproofing and stuff, which is here. Okay, uh, there's a super chat by Suman. He says, sir, please uh, continue Linux series from Kolkata. Uh, I actually tried to go much in depth with the Linux, but I realized that people are not ready for that kind of a live and that kind of in-depth knowledge about Linux. They didn't watch the videos, and that's why I stopped continuing. Making Linux videos is very, very consuming. It consumes not just you, but a lot of resources because there's a virtual machine going on, then you have to record and editing those videos. It's really time consuming and people were not watching it much. So I discontinued it that if people are not much interested in watching that, why would I be creating a content on that? So yeah. Raja says, sorry, I don't have Instagram. I'll create. You should actually. Usually people advise that, hey, I don't create Instagrams and stuff. I'm just opposite. I'll say, go for Instagram. It's a fun platform. Keshav says, hi, sir. I just finished LCO Mern Boot Camp. Ah, that's nice. Awesome. What should I do next to upgrade my skills? My final aim is to become freelance developer. Is it a good idea? Of course, it's a good idea. And I think if you have taken up the Mern course, you are almost there, like 70 to 80%. You are already there. Because in the Mern course, you have uh, learned how to write a custom backend, payment gateway, complete e-commerce website, admin sessions. We have, we have done all of it in the Mern course. My recommendation is to create three more exact website. And uh, you can pick up any topic. Like we have designed a store for t-shirt. You can design a store for uh, maybe some drinks, Pepsi, Cola, and stuff. Uh, get some orders and stuff like that. Uh, similar to that, create another one for a gym membership website, another one for a music or kind of LCO clone. If you are doing, you are able to do that from scratch, I think that's a tremendous and absolutely killer portfolio for the freelancing. And after that, you are ready to take any project. I don't think so. You will be uh, facing any problem, but just not my course is enough. You need to create a couple of projects on your own and then you can do freelancing. And I think nothing is going to stop you after that. You're going to be absolutely money-making machine after that. Uh, no, I'm not promoting that, yeah, you're going to be millionaire by overnight, but it's surely going to be much more profitable. I've been doing freelancing for a really, really long time. Free React course for 10 people. No, that's not going to happen because... Free, pe free people are usually the course collectors or either are trolls. Because, you know, the Mern course, we have kept its pricing at just 199 rupees. If somebody is not really ready to invest 199 rupees in the course, probably he's going to just uh, devalue the content by putting up troll comments or something or is going to just collect the course. So I don't think you're buying a 50,000, 80,000 rupees laptop. You are investing lakhs of rupees in the college. So I'm never in the side of giving away the courses for free. And I don't think so. I will be ever. Uh, if somebody can convince me opposite of that, I'll definitely do that. But as of now, I have never seen people to be able to convince me. And all those people I have open, uh, I have also talked to a couple of people that if you want that everything should be free, we would love to hire you for free. Work for us at our office and we'll give you access to all the courses, but you have to work for us. So give something, take something. That's how it works. Hey, Yash Ranjan. Hey, sir. How are you, Yash, here? Hey, Yash, it's been a long time. How you have been doing? I hope you are doing good. I hope so. Okay. Where is the giveaway of Bluetooth mouse? It's already being given to almost everybody. I hope. Sir, messaged you on Instagram. Please check. Uh, my Instagram is actually very, very crowded these days. Uh, suddenly, my Instagram people are growing up. Let me check how much of them are there. I can check it right now. And uh, the numbers are growing pretty significantly. 25.4. It's growing quite nice. And uh, it's flooded right now uh, because people are at home and they are sending me so many messages. I'm talking to a lot of them. I'll definitely get back to your message as well as soon as I find it, so, okay. 
Can we make Selenium bots undetectable? No, that's not the point of Selenium. Some people say, can we... The first and the most frustrating question of the Selenium forum is, or the Selenium forum where everybody lies is, can we bypass the captcha through Selenium? Selenium is not for that. Selenium is not for writing hacking scripts. Selenium is for the testing. And if you are able to beat up the captchas, there's no point of Selenium. There's no point of it. Uh, there's a super chat. He says, sir, I want to learn React Native. Any easy path? Uh, my courses are definitely way more easier than you can find anywhere. I spend hours and hours to figure out examples to make it easy. So I think you'll face no problem at all in my React Native course. The prerequisite for having React Native is first and foremost, understand the JavaScript. And not just the JavaScript, the more ESI, ES6 part of it, or ES7 if you want to go there as well. Uh, something like callbacks, promises, arrow functions, once you understand them, then you can go ahead and take your take my React Native course directly, and you'll be making full-fledged apps, both backend and frontend in React Native. And if you face any problem, our team is already there to help you out as much as and as fast as possible. One of our like advantage at Learn Code Online that we give to every single student is uh, having a team which answers the question insanely. Uh, fast as possible. So we are doing good there. OK. Do you have piano near you? Uh, yeah, it's there. Uh, just just there. <laughs> I sometimes play it. I'm not really a pro. I'm just learning it. Uh, in my free time, I try to spend my time in either learning a language or playing something here, which I'm still not really good at. But yeah, language-wise, I'm doing really, really good. I found a new app and through which I'm learning, although there are many of them. But I'm learning through this app. Probably I'll make a video on that, that how I'm doing with that. And I'm getting really, really better in Spanish now. I hope that within a like few years, I will be able to be get really better in Spanish, probably in like three to four years, not big time. OK, there's a super chat says, uh, prerequisite for Mern Bootcamp. Uh, Mern Bootcamp course, I know ES6.js. That's it. That's all you need. Uh, also, I will be writing some of the HTML parts, like div and paragraphs. I hope there is no issue in that. Uh, but I don't think so it's going to be. But ES6, that's it. That's all you need. Majorly, what I have used almost everywhere is arrow functions. And I have used promises as well. And that's it. Not much. I've tried to keep this course as easy and as beginner friendly as I could have. System design course. Um, no, it's not going to come up. Probably not till uh, plants are actually disturbed. Plants are actually disturbed. But surely it's not going to come up probably till uh, September or October. I'm fully packed till there. But there's a lot of free time now. Things are canceled. Events are canceled. My conferences are canceled. Oh, my God. Sometimes I look at it, and it's it sounds scary that so many things are canceled. But it's not just me. It's the entire world. So yeah, things are not looking good. So make daily challenge on YouTube. I'm about. I'm planning actually one more challenge. Uh, that's going to be about mobile app. I want an. I want an app that you should create for me. It's going to be a fun challenge. I'll be, again, your client uh, trying to give you a challenge about creating an app for me and share that on Instagram. So I'm preparing and you know preparing all these assets and preparing a theme, requirements. It takes a little bit of time so that you can have it. So I'll definitely give you more challenge, probably on Monday. Yeah, I think so. OK, how Corona uh, going to affect software industry? Not just software industry, this virus is going to affect almost every one of us. Uh, just to give you a fair and broad example, uh, let's just say that some of the airlines files for bankruptcy, and 100% they are going to be. Some of them are going to be. That means less competition in the airlines. And since existing airlines have to pay the salary of the people, they will, they will mark their pricing of the ticket a bit higher. That means. People will be traveling less. That means hotels are getting less client, means higher pricing of hotels. That means uh, less conferences. 
that means less business is going to interchange that means less project are going to be given and that means less hiring in every single industry so everything is just interconnected and uh, i don't want to scare you guys but things are not looking right i can see the dark clouds coming right from there and it's going to be it's going to be a bit of a hard time that's coming up how can we start language as a fresher and which is good? All of the languages are good. C is good. Java is good. Python is good. JavaScript is amazing. And Ruby is also amazing. All of the languages are amazing. You just need to figure out uh, what to do, what you want to really make. What a company, small company, expects from a MERN fresher developer day-to-day -day activity. Day-to-day -day activity is actually different uh, before getting hired, I think the project that you are making in my MERN course is more than enough. But as a day-to-day -day activity, it's a different, whole different scenario because all companies are working on different stuff. Like some are working on enhancing the user experience. Some are working on enhancing the payment gateway and the payment flow. It's different for everyone. Companies are not working on anything. Okay, uh, let's pick up more questions. Uh, sir, will summer boot camp get postponed? Don't worry about that. Whatever will happen, we will keep you updated. And if things will go sideways or something, don't worry. I'm here. I'll manage everything. Don't you worry. And uh, we are looking forward that what's happened. We don't know the future, but whatever will happen, I'll keep you updated. I have already your emails and your phone numbers. I will give you a proper response and channel if everything anything goes shifted or anything like that. Uh, we'll we'll do everything as best as possible, so you don't worry about that part. Uh, apart from you, we are also much worried about boot camps and everything that's happening. But we'll take care of that together, just like everybody else is doing. DSA course in LCO is uh, very for beginners. Uh, depends what you call beginners. I am not going to be talking in the DSA course that, hey, this is the loop syntax. You write four, and then you put a bracket, and then I equals to n. I'm not going to be talking on that in DSA course. I expect that you already know the language basics. And you can, if I just say, hey, write a loop for printing number 1 to 10, you can do that. So again, it all depends on you what you call beginner. I call beginner something like that. OK. Uh, uh, looks like a lot of people are here, but they are not hitting the like button. You should be doing that. Come on, guys. Hit that like button. It's very, very important. This mic is actually pretty good. I love this mic. I wanted to update my mic, but things are on hold. My shipping is not going to reach me anytime soon. OK, uh, CPP course on LCO. Probably I'll make one soon, but I don't know when. I really don't like to talk about what course is coming up until and unless the course is like 80 to 90% ready and I'm really ready to roll it out in the next week or next day. I really never kind of disclose that what course we are cooking up. I really don't like it. I definitely put course in early bird, but when I just have to write description or I have to upload a few existing videos, I never roll out my course even if like five videos are still remaining. That's kind of my thing. I've been doing it for long. Uh, really want to get back on LCO, really missing LCO, no matter what it takes. I'm up for it. What can I do? Anything to be in LCO. <laughs> I'll definitely uh, check that out again. Uh, but you know, as of now, the things are not looking really, really on a bright side. Let's see how things are going to be. Uh, I cannot promise anything because this is a tough time for everyone. I am 23. Is it so late to learn programming? Let me tell you one thing. Um, I don't want to be offending anybody, but usually I like to avoid the question that starts with the age. Like, I am 15. Can I learn this? I'm 10. Can I learn this? I'm 2. Can I learn this? Probably 2 is too long. But anyways, you got the point. I have no idea what this age factor has to do in learning anything. You can learn anything. This is not a physical activity that I'm going to say that, hey, you are 50 above. Now you cannot play football. It's just a thing you have to do on your desk. And some people, yours is genuine question because your age is 23, probably a genuine question. But usually the age 
comes before the questions, that means the person is just trying to show off. And I usually avoid that kind of questions. Okay, there's a super chat. It says, uh, I'm learning bug bounty, but I am struggling in SQL injection. Any easy way? And please make a video on HTTP method unable to find satisfying explanation. Ah, uh, that's actually, I'll, I'll take a photo here. Uh, because I think that's a very, very interesting request to make a, to make an entire video on what could be the different methods of HTTP, like uh, get, post, put, delete, and a bunch of others. So I think that's going to be an interesting video. Thanks for uh, sending that. Again, uh, coming back to the bug bounty, uh, SQL injection is not really an easy topic. I remember I used to teach that. Uh, like Probably there are 40 to 45 types of different variation in the SQL injection that comes up right from the cookie-based injection to Boolean-based injection uh, to the single quotes to double quotes. There's a whole lot of variety in the SQL injection. And there is no proper way of defining that this is the only possibilities of SQL injection. Wherever you can read or write the database, that's where the injection comes in. It can be through the URL, through any field which interacts with the data. Almost every field interacts with the database. So there is no easy way of going it. Uh, the only way that I would recommend is to read as much as of the case studies as you can find. Uh, these websites where you register yourself for the hackings and stuff, uh, they roll out a lot of them. Follow the big guys and big guns of the security, and you will get a lot about it. Uh, XSS, SQL injections, and a whole bunch of things. So uh, there's no easy way going on. Regarding your other thing, HTTPS uh, methods, I would love to make a video on that. Surely it's going to take a bit of time, but we are not running out of the time. That's the beauty about this uh, this thing. So I'll definitely, I've already taken a photo, and I'll, I'll do that. Uh, yes, sir, I understand. I'm also good in Spanish. Por favor. OK, so I saw a video from you in Skillshare, ah, uh, yes, I, <laughs> uh, let me just put it out. Let me just put it out to all of you, to all the over three, three and 330 people. I have my courses on tons of platform and you're gonna find them probably if there is any famous platform, you're gonna find my courses there from different variety of companies, names. I do own a couple of other companies and ventures as well. I don't like to disclose that openly, but yes, my courses are on almost every single marketplace and every single platform which you might have heard or might not have heard. They are there in the platforms which are more famous in America. They are on the platform which are more Canadian based. I have my courses on uh, Australian platforms as well. My courses are being dubbed into Spanish as well. And a lot of Spanish people learn from my courses. And uh, that's how the things are. But Again, I don't provide support to any of those platforms. Once the course is there, I don't provide updates in those platforms because they are third-party platform. They just give me my share of money, and that's it. And uh, the place where I upload myself and I, I personally take care of the things is Learn Code Online, where I upload my courses, I take care about their updation, I take care about the student's request, as well as provide support. So again, I'm a video creator. Consider me uh, like a factory who makes the thing, and then a ton of people like to borrow them. Some universities get that, tons of platforms get that. So yes, my courses are on variety of platforms. If you find my course on Skillshare, <laughs> that is there too. And uh, but I recommend that the services and everything that you're gonna get is gonna be the best at Learn Code Online. But I don't mind if you study from anywhere else as well. And that's officially I'm putting it. I've never said it officially. Yes, I do own many other companies apart from Learn Code Online. This is just one of my many companies. I do own a few of them. Some are working with partnerships. Some are working with different ventures. So there's a lot going on. <laughs> and that's how I keep myself busy. OK, uh, Crash Course on Ionic. Ionic never got me excited that I should do it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Ionic is one of the very fantastic platform, uh, but it is. Uh, which is the next mic you are thinking of? Is it better than the Scarlett 2i2? 
Scarlett 2i2 is not a mic. It's just an interface that converts your XLR uh, that can go into your computer. So Scarlett and the mic that comes with the Scarlett Studio, it's okay, but it's not really very fantastic. Uh, you'll be pretty happy with that, but there are other podcasters, uh, SMB. I know a lot of stuff about mic. I know a lot of stuff, and I can geek out the entire day on finding the best of the best mic possible. As I was saying, Scarlett 2i2 is a pretty decent if you're buying the packaging and that the mic that comes up as a default. But remember one thing, if you're going to be using Scarlett, your audience is going to hear you in just the left ear, not both. And if you're streaming anything live there, then of course, uh, until unless you're configuring it properly, your audience is going to hear you only in the left ear. So take care of that. Okay, uh, context API versus Redux in 2020. Uh, I would say majority of the applications that are going to be built up now, they can be done all in context API. Until unless the application is pretty humongous and gigantic, you don't need Redux. You don't need Redux. If you are scaling like to a very, very monstrous level, then you need Redux. Otherwise, I think application that are going to be built up now can be handled by context API. It's so good. In the context API, actually, you get a central place of context. How can I say that? Uh, you are almost getting up a state at the very central level. Then you can have a provider. Provider can have a values and values go on. And then you have the consumer, which can consume the value whenever you like. There is no drilling of the props. Some of you might be, this sounds a jargon. Yeah, I ex excuse me that I, I got too much into that. I shouldn't be. Okay. Uh, so yeah, my bad. I shouldn't be going for that. Okay, uh, can Mac be used for hacking? Anything, even your mobile can be used for hacking. Depends what you're doing. Okay. Uh, please make a video on Salesforce. Yeah, I'll try that. Not very much interested in the Salesforce. And the problem with me is, even if it is very profitable or the views are going to be insane, I'm not going to do it if I don't really like it. And that's an issue. Uh, so I need to get an interest in that. What is MERN and who is the target audience? MERN. MERN is a complete stack through which you design your web application, aka website, along with the database and the front end part. MERN stands for Mongo, Express, React, and Node.js. And using all of that, we learned to create an entire web application, aka a shopping store where people can upload uh, their t-shirts and somebody can buy it using the payment gateway. That's at least what we are doing in the course. Uh, sir, please guide related to hackathon skills. As of now, I don't think so. Hackathons are going to be happening anytime soon. Uh, but yeah, OK. So as I was saying, I don't have any special like, uh, you definitely should have skills in the hackathon, something like creating an apps and stuff. Because in usual of the hackathons, they provide you some of the MCQs and stuff. You write the questions, answer, competitive coding. And the final round, you have to, you will be given a concept. And based on that concept or data, you have to create an app or maybe a web application or something like that. So usually you participate in the team and stuff like that. Yes, Ranjan says, uh, Como estas, senor? Ah, oh. you want me to speak a bit of Spanish here? <laughs> okay, there is a super chat. Uh, please suggest the best package in Flutter for editing image and set draggable text on image, or how can I achieve this without packages in Flutter? That's a very, very specific question. I am really sorry, but I have to dig deep into that, that how to find or look into the stack overflows. I don't remember such things directly. If you'll ask me, uh, hey, what is the package for uh, integrating this payment gateway and I want to have an OTP base? I cannot do that. I'm not a superman. I'm definitely not a superman in programming. I just look for stuff. And I think uh, I don't have anything right out of my head to suggest to you for editing the image and setting the drag. You just want to do your project and you want to ask me that just give me an exact package and I should use that. And that's it. I'm all done. Searching for the package is also one of the part. And I have nothing in top of my head to answer that. 
Uh, if you want to do it without the packages in Flutter, it's going to be difficult, but it surely... I don't think so that you can do the drag and drop of the images on the mobile. I don't think so anybody will allow you to do that because uh, it's going to just uh, break the concept of sandboxing and apps in the phone and it will access a lot of things. So I don't think so anybody will allow you to do that, at least not in iOS. Android is a nightmare game. And I don't remember any package that for uh, editing the image and stuff. Surely there might be many, but I don't think so I can. Okay. Make money as a web developer, Node.js, and thank you for the content. Uh, thank you so much, for Weber, for nice uh, feedback. Yes, if I name my MERN course as Make Money as a Web Developer, Earn $10 million Overnight, surely that course is going to say, like, insane but I cannot do it. That's not really justifiable to put any claim like that, that you will be 100% making money after taking my course. There is no such course in the world that can guarantee you for making money. There are not even degrees. Engineering doesn't give you the guarantee that you will be 100% making money. Not even doctors. If you'll be good in the skills, you will get the job, you will get work, otherwise not. Uh, what is the advice for mobile app developers? Prepare your portfolio because a lot of jobs are going to go out and a lot of jobs are going to come in. So as much as you can prepare your portfolio, I can understand that if you spend like three to four years in a company, you don't have much of portfolio, it's gone because you have been busy in the company work so much. Right now is the time to get back and prepare your portfolio. RPA versus AWS for career in India. Okay, RPS, RPA is definitely worth of great hype, but my personal recommendation is go for AWS. It's going to be tough. It's going to be struggle in the initial days, but the afterwards, it's just gonna be absolutely amazing and you'll be making way more money as an AWS, but don't just leave it in between. Like, I don't want to say that you should go for just the associate. Go for a professional uh, level of that. Associate level is not really great. Uh, compared to anything related to RPA, my personal biasness is towards AWS. It's going to skyrocket much, much more as the new startups, everything are using AWS. They need somebody to configure their backends and architecture and infrastructure through AWS. It's a tough journey but it's worth it. It's 100% worth it. React plus Django, what's your thought? Exactly same as Mern. Like we definitely, in the entire Mern course, we have learned that we throw APIs and stuff. And in the React, we handle the APIs. So, you know, React is capable of handling anything in terms of API. So same you can do with the React as well or Django as well. AWS course on LCO. Uh, we are trying for that. It's not going to be like cheap course for like 200, 300 rupees. It's going to cost a bit more uh, because putting up a resource on AWS is costly. Uh, I myself have to take official exams. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cost me a bit while then I have to invest some in the credits to teach it. It's going to be expensive. So <laughs> and I'm not looking forward to put up very expensive courses as of now, but surely. We'll do that in the future, very soon in fact. What about the web challenge? It's going on. I haven't found like really amazing of the web pages that somebody has made. Few of them are pretty nice. I will update them in my GitHub repo, but as of now, it's good. How to get summer training at LCO? Uh, as of now, everything is paused. Uh, summer training and everything. I'm not pretty sure how that's going to turn up. It all depends on when we are going to control this pandemic that is going on. As soon as we control that, we can be back in action about offline stuff. Uh, we have put up a lot of money in a lot of sponsor sponsorship for the events. We have been going for a lot of that. Uh, so yeah. Uh, and yes, uh, yes, yes, I know you learned about a few words like uh, Buenos Nochas and all of that, but you know, 
I, I, buenas noches. I'm pretty sure uh, I can read entire Spanish. You give me a book, I can read it completely, probably understand like 40 to 50% of it. Uh, you are just, I'm pretty sure you are just Googling a few stuff. Otherwise, you have been writing the full entire sentence in that. And I'm pretty sure you're using the Google Translator. <laughs> Spotify clone bootcamp. We cannot run any kind of boot camps or stuff as of now. This is uh, because the entire team is at their home as of now. Uh, we are taking care of them. Of course, we need to. And we are trying our best to help them as possible. Uh, but, you know, things are a little bit out of my hands. And <laughs> everything is not really that much. Okay. Uh, there's a super chat. WordPress 2020. Any, any course in online LCO? If there will be, again, if, if there will be any course on WordPress, it's moreover going to be WordPress theme development and WordPress plugin development. I'm not really interested in creating a course about, hey, this is the WordPress, you install it, you install a theme, you drag and drop and website is ready. I don't think people hire for that that much. If they hire for this skill, they pay like what, uh, $20, $30? not really worth of the time in creating websites like this. If you get hired for designing a custom theme from the bootstrap or something, or you are hired to design a custom plugin, that's where you get paid nicely. And obviously I would like to prepare you for something for which you get paid more, more compared to like, I know how to install WordPress, I know how to install a theme and I'll prepare a website. That's, and again, if you have seen in the freelance market, the bidding on such project is like one refresh and there are a thousand bids on such projects. And if the project is on like React Native, custom designed in Django, what, there are four biddings on that? Probably five, and that's it. And on the WordPress, the biddings are going down, 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 like from $100, $20, I'll do it for $10, something like that. And on these custom projects like Django, React Native, React Native, very high. The minimum bid that I have seen so far on a React Native application was $500 for, it was, I will call it a mediocre project. I think any of my student in any course can build that app. And that was a $500, but sadly nobody bid, only me, I did that project. Uh, ah, there's a, ah, that's a nice gesture, so lovely. Uh, Mahipal Reddy, there's a super chat uh, for 100 rupees and he says, just wanted to say thank you. Uh, that's so kind of you. I really, really appreciate uh, this nice gesture for saying thank you. I hope I'll be able to serve you more. And again, if you are new and don't know that, uh, we have uh, reduced the price of our MERN course to just 199 rupees. And yes, all the certification, all the support is included in that. In case you want to give it a try, please uh, do that. Gyms are closed. How are you working out? Uh, I got my two dumbbells. 10 kg each, and I got my floor mat, kind of a yoga mat. Uh, I'm doing uh, floor bench press and flies and some biceps and stuff, but I'm missing my workout. This doesn't give me that feeling that I'm workout. I'm working out. I get my feeling in my gym. I need at least two hours of workout. This entire t-shirt should be wet. That's when I know that my workout is finished. And I'm missing that. And to be very honest, if I share my inner thoughts with all of you guys, the time is a bit scary. I I went to, uh, today only, I went to the grocery store and I've never seen my city in this condition ever, even at, not even at the night time, even 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, I've never seen this much of the silent around Everything is so scarily silent in the entire city. It doesn't feel really great. So I just really want that things should be fixed up as quickly as possible. I hope the great brains are at work. But it's scary. Uh, if you go outside and see all of that, it's it's scary. Uh, please have some discount on courses. The discount is already there on the Mern course. Uh, it's just 199 rupees. I don't think so. We can go any lower than that. Uh, like if you cannot afford 199, I'm sorry. I think you are not be able to afford your laptop and your mobile too. So there's no point of working out. Okay, so 
who is the target audience and prerequisite for MERN course? I like this one, but my background is just LCO Python course and little HTML. HTML side, you're all good, but I would recommend first to take my free JavaScript series and then you will be able to go for it. But as of now, uh, surely your Python skills will help, but please just learn JavaScript first. I have a free series on Learn Code Online app. First, take that. OK, uh, there's another super chat. It says, uh, yes, sir, I'm talking about custom theme and plugins. Yes, I will try to do that. I will try to do that. As of now, PHP is not onto a very priority because what I have noticed um, is PHP is not really much of a higher demand. Do you play guitars? No. What I've noticed is the PHP jobs are getting less paid compared to JavaScript and Python jobs. So I want to create courses which are much more higher paying and much more advantageous for the people. And you have no idea how many people actually message me every single day on Instagram that we got a job because of your course, we got an internship because of your course. And just with one course, I was able to crack down a job which is uh, 20,000, 35,000 rupees. And I just paid you uh, a 700 rupees or 800 rupees. I would like to uh, pay you a little bit more as a thanks gesture. I said, no need to do that. Yeah, if you got a job and you shared it with me, all I'm I'm happy. I'm doing good money-wise. Uh, surely it would be good that if you showed up this gesture, but if you just share your achievement with me on Instagram, that's all I need. That's all I need. It gives me so much of the smile on my face uh, that I love it. I love it. Where do you bid? I won't be sharing that. I've already shared too much of information about my freelancing, but I won't be doing that. Sir, your thought about Vue.js in Indian market. I was expecting that Vue will explode a lot more, but somehow it didn't reach even to a near level of the React. I, I don't know what's wrong. There were enough of the tutorials, there was enough of the support in the market, but still somehow companies didn't opt it that much. People who are freelancer and are having just one page website for a portfolio, they opted some of them, but even they opted for React or something. So I don't know what went wrong with the with the view uh, that it didn't picked up much in the market. Okay, there's a super chat by Akash. It says, uh, your take on get a job first and then pay us coding boot camps in India, which we also call income share agreement boot camps. My personal thought is um, I really don't like them that much because uh, what they are teaching uh, and they are asking for a fees is almost like uh, really, really very expensive. And uh, I'm, I'm not really in favor of that because if you really, eventually you all are going to get job. It just is your fear that is getting them here. Uh, I don't, I'm not really comfortable in that kind of a share agreement because you will eventually get a job and whatever the skills they are teaching, you can learn it on variety of other websites, not just my website, on variety of other websites in fractions of it. If I'll just say like in just 5,000 or 10,000 rupees, you can learn a lot these days and you are paying like what, 22 lakhs rupees, um, sometimes even uh, 2.5 lakhs or 3 lakhs or 5 lakh rupees for that. I think any sensible person wouldn't do that. Only a scared person will do that and eventually will realize, oh man. Because uh, once you are in that phase of life, you have a lot more responsibilities for your uh, home loans or car loans. And then a big share of your income is being cut out into that. Then you realize, oh man, I could have done it on myself as well. I, I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I could be 100% wrong here. But I don't think so that... Um, I will do anything like this in the near future until unless somebody convinced me that this is a good path and is serving the student at their best. Um, I think you should, I think they are just uh, kind of sucking your fear uh, where you don't want to pay any money because I think the courses we all know, uh, they're pretty affordable now. And I don't know what more to say. It might create some of the controversies there. I really don't want into that mess. There's already enough of controversies on YouTube just because people had different thought. And I definitely have a different thought here. Uh, so let's just bury this one here. I'm, ex I'm accepting that I'm 100% wrong in that thought. 
let's just bury that down here. I'm not into that part of uh, mud fight that I want to get into. I'm totally away from that uh, just because I have a different thought. I would rather like to focus more on uh, creating and continuing my Golang series or creating another course. And I'll definitely charge for it. But the Golang course is going to be free. But again, uh, I'm a pretty straightforward guy. If I want to put anything for free, I'll just say this is free. If I want to put anything behind the money, I would say I charge this much amount. And I think this is the quality which everybody loved about me that this guy is straightforward. If you want to charge money, he just says, I'm going to charge money. And of course, you all guys are watching this uh, so that one day you can get hired and can charge money for your services to any companies. I don't think anything is wrong there. I don't think anything is wrong there. So let's not get into the mud fight of that and have it. There's a super chat, completed a free JS bootcamp, uh, free JS about Mern. Is it okay? Oh, there's too much of the short language. Probably I'm getting too old to understand that. I'll try again. Uh, Mern JS, is it okay to jump a or dig more? Uh, no, if you want to go into the Mern, Mern course, you are totally ready for it and you can now jump into it. I'm getting old in understanding these short languages. I used to do that a lot in college, but now it's tough for me. How many languages do you know? Okay, on to a different sarcastic note. Uh, Hindi, English, Marwari, and a bit of Spanish. Four of them. <laughs> uh, in terms of computer, never counted that. Just give me time and I'll be ready in any language. And of course, a bit amount of money for the project that you want me to do and I'll be ready in anything. <laughs> okay, just kidding there. I hope you don't mind. Okay, uh, let's pick up a couple of more questions as we got much of the free time. Okay, Redux versus React Context API, where to use which one? How many things are getting varied and uh, uh, how should I put it? How many things are getting varied in your application? Like how many times you are using a, sing a single state or a variable at multiple places? Uh, it, this is going to answer whether you should use Redux or not again. Uh, so some people use and depends a lot about uh, their stats and graphs and everything. There, the Redux is a better option. But if your application is not that much big, I think you can just get away with the Re uh, React Context API. No need to create a central store through Redux. You can do that in Context API. Just buy the burn course. Hey, Himanshu, thank you so much. Uh, are you also know about COVID-19? <laughs> Who doesn't know about it at this time? If somebody doesn't know about COVID-19 as of now, I think he's living under the rock or something. Uh, Joshua King says, hey, uh, tell why you don't make course in Hindi? Uh, because it has a it has less audience. <laughs> There's, there's a nice, who drinks this much of vodka? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the reason why I don't make courses in Hindi is because I don't have much of a huge audience base in Hindi. Majority of the people who purchase my courses are actually uh, down below from Maharashtra. So Maharashtra, Andhra, Karnataka, Tamil, and Kerala, Odisha, these are the group which are majority of the buyers of my courses. And they absolutely love that my uh, tongue is pretty clear. They are able to understand it. And apart from that, on the other side, the courses also go in Australia. Courses also go in the United States, in Canada. So they also need to understand what I say very, very clearly. And that's what I focus some people make mockery that, hey, why are you speaking in a different tone? That's not like Indian English. Speak in Indian English. I don't give a single damn about it because their advice is not going to make me good money. But if I talk in a way that is more understandable to Canadians, to England, uh, to Australians, to the people who are in, in India as well, that is good for, uh, good for me. So I just totally ignore their advice. 
there we go. A heart from Telangana. As I told you, a lot of people are, hey, just, just on a fun side note, uh, from where you're watching, just name your state here and let the people know from where you're watching this live. And let the people know that what I'm talking about, I'm actually doing this. Hey, Anirudh, uh, thank you so much. No need for super chat from you. Hey, team members, please don't super chat. Super chat is a way uh, through which you either show love or either ask me questions. Team members, I know you love me and you're working, so please. Okay, let's pick up a few of West Bengal, Maharashtra, Pune, Sikkim. I love that beautiful place. Mumbai, Maharashtra, Karnataka. So see, uh, Jharkhand, Nepal. Love that, beautiful. Okay, there's a super chat. I'll take that. Uh, recommend videos on software development process. As of now, I don't have much of the resource, but first let's see that. Love from Tamil Nadu. Ah, a lot of hurts from Tamil Nadu is coming up. Tela. Ah, so much. Looks like entire India is watching. Ah, there's a Punjab as well. Gujarat is here. Uttar Pradesh is here. Agra is here. Beautiful. Gujarat is here. Ah, that's that's actually too fast to see it. West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, uh, MP, Odisha. Uh, okay, so a lot of people are here. A lot of people. So as I told you, as you can see, ah, there's a lot of from Bangalore, Tibet. Ah, somebody's watching from Tibet too. I ah, love you. Uh, that name is uh, Karag Kunchok. Sorry if I if I mis mispronounced your name. Sri Lanka is here as well. Bihar is here. Ah, that's lovely. Nepal, Haryana, Tamil Nadu. Yes, I do have audience from Chandigarh, Haryana as well. But uh, as for some reason, <laughs> I'm not really that much known in the upper side of my country. Uh, Ladakh. Somebody's watching from Ladakh as well. Oh, the same guy. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Uh, love from Bihar. Thank you so much. Uh, I know, JS, can I take Mern or learn Mongo and Node first? You don't need to take that first uh, because surely it would be a good idea to learn that as well. But in the Mern, you'll get a whole lot of knowledge about Mongo and Node in a practical aspect. So I think you can just directly on that. Surely my Mern course and Mongo course are a little bit more expensive. I'll earn more money, but still I would say first take the Mern course. Probably you don't need to take it. Somebody says, only one from Goa. Even one guy from Goa is enough. Even one guy from... Uh, there is a Damanian here as well. Somebody is watching from Daman as well. Nice. Somebody says China. <laughs> yes, some people watch from China as well. Uh, we tried actually with one company. Let me share one, one funny incident. We tried actually uh, with one company who wanted to uh, translate my video in Chinese and wanted to to put my courses on their website as well. We tried it with one course and it turns out they were not really able to translate my videos. They were not even good enough in the English. So yeah, we, we tried even in China as well to put up these courses. And yeah, things are a bit funny in China. I'll probably share that. Okay, so since we are having more of the free time, uh, I'll probably share in the next week a few of my stories from China and one from Italy as well uh, in Instagram. These are my travel stories, my personal stories. Nobody has heard them ever, uh, not even much of my family members. So I'll share them in there. Uh, I hope you are going to love them. They are going to come up exclusively just on Instagram because I want to keep my YouTube uh, just for more over the tech stuff. So these fun travel stories are going to be in the Vertical Bytes. I hope you know about Vertical Bytes. That's the series I run on Instagram. Okay. Uh, sir, what about Flutter Jobs missed two Super Chats? Uh, sometimes Super Chat, like if anything is below 100 rupees, that doesn't get stuck there and that's why I miss it. So uh, what about Flutter Jobs? Uh, let me tell you one thing. Uh, one of the recent guy from the last boot camp, when things were good, no COVID-19, uh, one of the guy uh, got a job in Flutter after doing a bootcamp from our uh, company. I think he got a package of, uh, I think, 9 lakh rupees or something. I don't remember exactly, but it was somewhere around 9 or 10 lakh. I don't remember exactly. Uh, that's what the Flutter is. He took the Flutter course online first. Then he came to our office for learning it professionally. Uh, he spent entire month at our office, created insane amount of apps back to back. And that's what it is. So you got the idea. 
Allahabad. So a lot of people, Prayagraj. Okay, not Allahabad, Prayagraj. Yeah, they're changing the name like insanely. Everywhere the names are getting changed. Thank goodness they all agreed with the COVID nineteen at least. Okay, so I find React JS slow while developing. Um, no, it's not slow. Uh, we didn't find it much slow when we actually deployed it on production on multiple instances. And you're going to realize that very soon. We are about to roll out a few stuff. Uh, what do you think about uh, uh, happening on these days? This is sad time. This is really probably the worst time I have ever witnessed and I'm ever going to be witnessed. I, I was really... Okay, uh, there is a super chat. It says... No, not super chat. It's a regular chat, but I saw Jaipur there. So yeah. Uh, if I visit Jaipur someday, how can I meet you? I'm pretty easily available in Jaipur. You can probably find me in some gym or in a restaurant or somewhere. But surely if you plan it out properly in advance, you can just ping me on Instagram. We can have coffee or we can meet at our office. Not here at studio. I don't invite anybody here. But at our training center or something, uh, we can surely meet. Uh, but again, you know, uh, this is a very private place. This studio, nobody enters here. None of none of the person is invited in here. Today, live is unlimited. Uh, not unlimited, but yeah, I got a lot of free time these days. So <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting around and watching and enjoying it with you guys. Uh, just love to spend time. If I get more time, I would definitely love to enjoy and probably will have an iced tea or something with you guys. Probably should I travel? Like after these things get over, I probably would love to travel to few states and I'll let you know in advance so that we can have uh, a live interaction in some mall or something. How about it? How about it? Do you say that? Uh, do you teach in your office apart from boot camp? No, I don't teach uh, offline now, at least not in India. Uh, because when I teach, I charge a little more and uh, I don't think so. Uh, people are going to be all ready for that. Uh, I usually teach uh, in the corporate boot camps because uh, that's where I like and I get paid nicely there. So, yeah, I have taught people into FANG as well on a couple of stacks. So I charge a little bit more there and students actually they cannot afford it more much. So. Really, I don't hesitate it. If you want, I can. Uh, but yeah, usually I like to avoid training people at offline boot camps until unless they are representing some companies. If I get a tender from company or something, I would love to. I would love to teach that. I have taken boot camps in many countries actually. Uh, uh, the most interesting one it was in France once. Another one or was in Greece. That was that was one of the best boot camp because uh, just outside. The place where I was taking the boot camp uh, was the beach, and everybody was grabbing their lunch, was sitting on a wall, and that wall was going just in the beach. It was so beautiful. Ah, there's a super chat actually too. What is the best backend service to learn for Flutter apps? Uh, Flutter is actually compatible with all of the backend services that you probably are thinking in your mind. The best one, what I would recommend, is a system which is designed in Node Express and uh, probably Mongo or MySQL. That's totally up to you. Both of them are pretty good. Because through that system, the way how you export your APIs are ridiculously simple, and the workflow is so nice. And if you throw up your APIs from that backend system, Flutter handles everything nicely, easily, and perfectly. In some of the payment gateways, it still struggles a little bit. That's I'm um, still up to there. Yes, I know there are packages of Stripe and stuff, but doesn't mean there is a package, doesn't mean it's going to support the all of the things that are coming up from that payment gateway stuff. Uh, so I would say that, yes, uh, I think one of my favorite, if I had to do it, would be uh, from the scratch as of now, would be something like probably MySQL and Mongo or Mongo, depends on what is needed and i'll do it in express and uh, node.js that's what i would be doing if i have to design anything like that again personal choice i hope that's what you're looking up for welcome to kerala i would love to be in many other as well uh c plus plus is best chupa rustam hai <laughs> yes of course 
C++ is one of my favorite programming languages, uh, which got me into uh, Amazon as well, did a lot of work on it on the network simulator, wrote a lot of protocols, a lot of drivers in C++, and I loved it, every single bit of it. So, and surprisingly, we don't have any course on C++ as of now. <laughs> so yeah, surely one day we will have it. I don't know when, when this one day will come. But sure, there's a lot to do at LCU, a lot of courses that people are looking up for. I definitely uh, have a lot of backlog that I would love to clear up, but sadly, I cannot clear it up in probably a couple of years. But I, I'm keep making I'm making the courses. And this year, I'll be focusing more on the base courses. Uh, once I'm finished with this current one, probably next week, I'll be rolling out a course. And again, one more thing. Uh, please make sure you turn on all of your notification from the LCO app because probably in the next week you are going to get a notification for an upcoming course. So make sure you keep an eye on that. Uh, that's going to be early bird discount for like two days, I think, but not more than that. So that's what we will be doing. And uh, in this year, I'll be focusing more on the core courses after this one and not on the frameworks and libraries because they keep on getting outdated and updated. And I have to re-record the course. It's, it's too much of the work. So I'll be focusing more on the core languages and concepts after this. Let's see. Let's see how things goes on. So that's all what we'll be doing. I know uh, people are still here and probably would like me to go keep on continuing there. But I think that's it. That's all what we'll be doing as of now. Now, what I'll be doing, I will be definitely recording more videos tonight. But first, I'll watch one episode from one of my favorite shows, Money Heist, La Casa de Papel. So after that, I'll come back onto this seat again. We'll record probably two more videos that are just lined up there. So that's it for this one. Bye-bye. Uh, Good night. Stay safe. Uh, make sure you are safe. Your family members are safe. And I wish that this thing goes away from entire planet very, very soon. And uh, I hope you all remain safe and sound. And wherever you are, if you need anything from my side, help or anything, uh, feel free to reach me out. I would love to help you as best as I can. And uh, hopefully this pandemic goes away soon. It makes me a bit sad, but what can we do? That's it for this one. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye, Ajay. Good night, Ajay. Gable. Fezan Khan. Bye. Bye. Uh, Arun SKS, uh, bye bye, bye bye as of now. Good night, uh, stay safe.